I have the keys to unlock Pocket Ronnie. We are on 12B, problem 5 through okay, 8. Okay, today we are graphing inequalities. Inequality sign is less than or equal to, and this one is greater than or equal to. Uh, you start, you read the left side first. This is less than or equal to. This is greater than or equal to. This would be less than. This would be greater than. Okay? When we graph inequalities, you still want this to be in slope-intercept form. Anytime you're graphing, it has to be in slope-intercept form. This is not in slope-intercept form. 3y is less than or equal to 2x minus 9. That's not in slope-intercept form. You need to divide everything by 3. So we're going to divide everything by 3. So these 3's cancel. So then you would have y is less than or equal to 2 thirds x a negative 9 divided by a positive 3 is a negative 3. So now this is our equation in slope-intercept form. You graph it just the same way you would if you had an equal sign. You graph your y-intercept first. So I'm going to graph my y-intercept at negative 3. Go down 1, 2, 3 on my y-axis. Then you graph your slope, rise over a run. So this is positive. So rise 2, then run over to the right 3. So from your y-intercept, you go up 2, 1, 2, and then go to the right 3, 1, 2, 3. That would be my second point. Now when you're graphing inequalities, here's the difference. You need to look at this inequality sign. When you have less than or equal to or greater than or equal to these, you have to use a solid line. You're using a solid line because it has an equal sign. You are including every point on that line. So a solid line means you are including every point on the line. When you have less than or greater than, you are using a dashed line because you are not including every point on the line. Here, ours is less than or equal to, so we would have a solid line for our line. Then the one other thing that you look at, so like number six says, will this be a solid line or a, do a dotted line? It's going to be a solid line because it's less than or equal to. It has the equal to. So then the other thing, we're going to come back to number seven. Number eight says shade in the graph. This symbol reads less than or equal to. We want everything less than the line. You think of your line as your man standing on your line, and I want everything less than the line. If I want less than, I want below the line. If it's greater than, I want above the line. This is less than or equal to. The equal to tells me I want a, a solid line. Less than tells me I want everything below the line. So you shade everything below the line. So when you're graphing inequalities, you look at do you have a solid line or dashed line, and then you also have some shading involved. So number seven says two choose points, one on each side of the line. Okay. So I'm going to choose this point right here at the origin just because it's zero, zero, and zero, zero are easy numbers to work with. So I'm going to choose 0, 0, and remember that's an x value and a y value, okay? That's on the non-shaded side. Now I'm going to choose a point on the shaded side. I'm just going to choose a point um, right here. So let's see if I'm going to make it really dark. This point right here, that would be 2, 1, 2, 3, negative 3. This point right there is 2, negative 3. So I'm going to choose the point 2, negative 3, and that is an x, y value. If you took your point that's in the non-shaded area and substituted it back into the original equation, it should make the equation false, meaning that is a false statement. So in other words, if I took the point 0, 0, which is in the, in the non-shaded area, that's my x, y value, put in 0 for your y, x value, put in 0 for your y value into the original equation. So if I had the original equation of 3y is less than or equal to 2x minus 9, put in 0 for x and y. Putting in 0 for y, 3 times 0 is 0. Putting in 0 for x, 2 times 0 is 0, and 0 minus 9. So this 0 came from 2 times 0 is 0, 0 minus 9 is negative 9. Is 0 less than or equal to negative 9? No. 0 is not less than negative 9. It's bigger than that. So that is a false statement. Any point that is in the non-shaded area should make your equation false when you put in these x and y values in there. If you pick points in the shaded area, 
when you put in your x and y values into your original equation, it should make that statement true. So 2, negative 3 is a point in the shaded area. So I'm going to put, for my x value, I'm going to put in 2, and for my y value, I'm going to put in negative 3 into the original equation. Here's my original equation, 3y is less than or equal to 2x minus 9. Putting in negative 3 for y, that's 3 times negative 3, less than or equal to 2 times 2, my x value was 2, minus 9. 3 times negative 3, that would be negative 9, is less than or equal to. 2 times 2 is 4, 4 minus 9 is negative 5. Is negative 9 more debt than negative 5? Yes, so it makes that statement true. So this is what they're wanting you to do or to show when you're picking points on each side of the line. Okay, we are on page 12C and we are doing problems 1 through 5. You have negative y is greater than negative 2x minus 1. When you are graphing inequalities, you cannot have a negative sign in front of your y. So that negative sign has to go away. That's like saying negative 1 in front of there. So you divide everything by negative 1. When you divide or multiply by a negative, when you do inequalities, you have to flip the inequality sign. Anytime you divide or multiply by negative, you have to flip the inequality. So our now a negative divided by a negative is a positive, means we just have y on the left. And because we are dividing by a negative, we have to flip our inequality sign. So instead of greater than, it will now be less than. Negative divided by negative is a positive. 2 divided by 1 is just 2, so that would be 2x. And negative 1 divided by negative 1 is now a positive 1. So this is my new equation that I am going to be graphing. y is less than 2x plus 1. Less than, there's no equal sign, means we will have a dashed line. It's less than, so we will shade below the line. Okay, so first graph your y-intercept at positive 1. It's right there. Then do your slope, rise over run. You can make this 2 over 1 if you want to. So you rise 2, go to the right 1. So from your y-intercept here at positive 1, rise 2, 1, 2, go to the right 1. And there is your second point. Less than, no equal sign, so that means you want a dashed line. And then if your man was standing here, you want everything below the line, less than the line, so that means you are shading below the line, everything below the line. Okay, so here, number two, will this be a solid line or a dotted line? It's going to be a dotted line. Number four, we shaded the graph, we shaded below. Okay, number three says to choose two points, one on each side of the line. So I'm going to choose a point in the non-shaded area. I'm choosing this one right here. That would be the point 0, 1, 2, 3. We're at 0, 3. So if I was to stick these x and y um, coordinates in the original equation, if I put in 0 for x up here and 3 for y, it would make this equation false. Anything in the non-shaded area would make this false, a false statement. Okay, now I pick a point in the shaded area. Well, you can see here the origin was, would fall in the shaded area, everything below the line. So the origin is in the shaded area, that's 0, 0, and that's an x and y value. If you put in 0 for x and 0 for y in the original equation, it should make the statement true. Anything in the shaded area should make this statement true. See, if I put in 0 for x, that'd be negative 2 times 0. Anything times 0 is just 0. 0 minus negative 1 is negative 1. Putting in 0 here, negative 0, there's no such thing. So here we had on the left was 0 and on the right was negative 1. 0 is greater than negative 1. So it makes that statement true. Um, okay, we already shaded the graph. Then number 5, it says, is the point 3, negative 2 a solution of the inequality? Anything that is in the shaded area is a solution for the inequality. It makes those, that statement true. So let's go and check. Graph the point 3, negative 2. Start at the origin. Positive 3 in the x direction. 1, 2, 3. Go down negative 2 in the y direction. That 3, negative 2 is right there. Okay? Right here. Is it in the shaded area? Yes. Any point in the shaded area will be a solution for the inequality. In other words, if we stick that x and y value in the original equation, it will make it a true statement. So yes, 
3, negative 2 is in the shaded area, so yes, it is a solution for this inequality. Okay, we are doing 12E. We're on page 12E, problem 6 through 9. You have negative x is less than or equal to negative 4. You cannot leave a negative sign in front of your variable. Okay, slope-intercept form means there is no negative sign in front of there. So we have to divide both sides by negative 1. It means on the left, we'll have negative divided by negative, which is a positive. Whenever you divide or multiply by negative, you have to flip your inequality sign, okay? So this is less than, less than or equal to, but we've got to flip it to where it now becomes greater than or equal to. We're flipping it because we've divided or multiplied by negative. Now on the right, a negative divided by a negative is a positive, and 4 divided by 1 is 4, so that would be, be a positive 4. So this is what we're graphing now, okay? If you want to think of it as graphing x equals 4, because when this means everywhere on that line, x is 4. So we go over in the x direction, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and we end up with a vertical line. Everywhere on this line, our x value is 4. So x equals 4 is a vertical line. But since we have inequality, we want greater than or equal to, which means we will have a solid line. Anytime you have the equal to, you have a solid line because you want to include every point on that line. So we have a solid line. Now we look at our shading, okay? We want greater than. We want everything greater than four. If you're standing here, where's everything greater than four? Everything greater than four is to the right because everything this way is bigger than four. That's five, six, seven, eight, nine. Going this way in the x direction, that's three, two, one, zero negative numbers. That's all smaller than four. So if we want greater than four, that means we want everything to the right of this line. Everything to the right of this line is greater than 4. Okay, So we did number 7, we did number 9, so look at number 8. Choose two points, one on each side of the line. Right here, this is in the non-shaded area. If we choose the origin, that's 0, 0. So if we put that in the original equation, our x value is 0. If you put in 0 up here, there's no such thing as a negative 0. So 0 is less than or equal to negative 4. Is 0 less than negative 4? No. 0 is greater than negative 4. So anything in the non-shaded area should make the statement false. Now let's pick a point in the shaded area. Okay, I'm going to pick something up here that's positive. I'm going to pick this point right there, which would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 1. So I'm going to pick the point, go over 5, in the x direction, go up 1. If I put those x and y values in the original equation, if I put them in, negative x is less than or equal to negative 4. There's no y values to put in, but let's put in negative 5, or 5 for x. Negative 5 is less than or equal to negative 4. Is negative 5 basically smaller than, or you say more in depth than negative 4? Negative 5 is smaller. If you look at the number line and you're at negative 4, negative 5 is smaller than negative 4. So that is a true statement. So anything in the shaded area will make when you go put in the x and y values, it will make that statement true. Number 10, I'm just going to go through that real quick. For what operation must the sign of inequality be reversed? That's multiplying or dividing by a negative number. You have to reverse your inequality sign when you are multiplying or dividing by a negative number.